Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. So good to see you again. It's great to see you again. I got dressed up for you. No, did you? Yeah. I did my hair for you. Yeah, I, was I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> my husband just shaved his head, so. How's it looking? I... I'm getting used to it. He likes to do. He likes to do it every now and then. I think actually it's good. It's good for it. You know, the hair comes back. You know, a little, a little darker and nice. thicker. So he, has a, he has a choice still. I don't have a choice anymore. Like yeah, but I think that he initially did it. He initially had my son shave his head during quarantine, mm -hmm. and that was a little scary. But um, I think that was mostly because he was concerned that he wasn't going to have a choice and he wanted to see what that was going to look like. Uh, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, he looks great regardless because I know he's going to watch this eventually. Right. <laughs> For Beautiful the either way. Handsome yes. either way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, very good. So you see your people just rolling in in the chat. Hi to everyone and all your friends and fans cheering you on here. Oh, thank you. Nice. I love your news page. Open Thank you so plus. much. I was just like going through it. I'm like, oh, I want to try that. Oh, I want to try that. Oh, I want to make, I want to make my own library of exercises based off of it. It looks so yeah. fun. Yeah. That's basically what I think of it as. It's, it's a library of the archival work. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have access to it and we all should. Yep. So that's, that's what it is. It's actually, so my goal isn't to be the source right? Yes. I don't want to, let's put it this way. I look at it, at it like this. Answers fill us, questions open us. So mm -hmm. open access Pilates archives, in my opinion, I want it not to answer everybody's questions because then that, then it's done. Yes. I want the learning to continue. So my goal is to create bigger questions. Yes. So you look at it, and for example, um, Victoria Batha, she did this uh, post earlier this week, which has since been removed, um, and it started out really beautifully, and she had posted some images of Joe, and Anita, who was uh, from Ex Explore Pilates, who was on uh, your program yesterday, I believe. Yes, yeah. Um, so she had, you know, we we're looking at a bunch of different transitions, Mm -hmm. and, and Joe was crossing his legs to sit down on the mat. And you know how you can look at something, not, but not really see it? Yes. So, you know, of course, I had seen this image of Joe going to sit down on the mat and, you know, countless times. And Anita brought up, well, you know, Christina, why do you think he does it so hunched over as opposed to how we do it nowadays with such an yes. erect posture? Yes. And I can only guess that that was, at least from, from my mentor, Romana Krasanovska, with ballet training, that that may be, at least from my training with her, we did it that way because, you know, having more erect posture is the goal. And, and yes. that was probably something that she might have contributed to it, at least yes. in my training, because that's all I know. Yes. And, but the interesting thing about it was that the fact that she brought that up raised some questions for me, like, but why did he show it that way? And he was always talking about this, you know, erect spine, but he's showing it so rounded over. So cut to yesterday, then I'm teaching one of my clients on Zoom and getting to the floor is always a little tricky for him because his big toe joints are really, really stiff. Okay. So it's, it's hard. He'll tend to roll out at the last minute. He'll, his knee will go out of his frame and he'll plop down at the very last second. So I said to him, I said, listen, let's just try something different today. I, I want to, to, to try this out. What if you were to get to the floor completely rounded over? Don't worry about keeping your sternum open, your chest lifted, mm -hmm. but just round over and take a seat. It was totally different. It worked perfectly mm. for him, for his body. Yes. And that never, I never would have had that opportunity to give him that advice had, had Victoria not posted that, had Anita not questioned it and brought it up mm -hmm. and made me think about it and not just take for granted, yeah, he's crossing his arms and his feet and he's taking a seat. Yes. So unfortunately, it was taken down. And if you want to learn more about that, go to Victoria's stories. Um, there's... A lot to see there. 
Um, but my point is we were having such a, a, a pleasant, innocent discussion about something that we love. And um, I also had a... Christina, I'm doing uh, my best to not ask 19 questions off the <laughs> I'm trying my best to be classy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> sometimes it's hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like sitting on my hands, like <laughs> metaphorically right now. Go on. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then I had, uh, same weeks, you know, this week as well, I... Um, Kathy Ross Nash, she actually is kind of a neighbor of mine. Um, <laughs> when she's not in New Jersey, she's in Bradenton, Florida, which is about 20 minutes away from where I am in Sarasota. Mm -hmm. And um, so she had, uh, let's just say, something in a similar vein happen. Um, unkind comments made in her direction, and we were talking, we were uh, sending messages privately, and she said something to me, um, you know, she was definitely taking the higher road, and she said, yes. just remember, don't let anyone steal your joy. Yes. And I said, Kathy, I have a book of quotes, and that was like my most recent quote that I put in my book. Mm. And it really helped me get through what was a very difficult start to my year but which I now realize has become one of the best, most transformative years in my 31 years of doing Pilates, 21 years of teaching it. And had I not gone through that experience, I wouldn't have found this insane amount of joy in the work yet again. Yes. And open access is doing that for me. And so it was really nice to also hear her um, you know, remind me of that because we yes. do have to be reminded. We can write it Absolutely. in a book, but you know, we can forget. It's affirming, right? It's it's an affirmation of where we are and what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And just if you caught any of the conversation yesterday, yesterday was special for me. And I was talking with my wife about it yesterday. I was still like, I came off my core conversations yesterday, the chat, and I basically just went outside and just sat on the curb with my tea and just kind of reflected on. Uh, I had four men. And one was a, an artist, the other was a basketball coach, and the other one is uh, Jason Williams, as you may know, Frankie Fitness, right? Yes. He's a so applies guy, but then also has. So the sense of having areas of passion and just doing your, just doing you, yeah, it was it was so powerful. And like, and what you said, like you find joy, and there's some pushback, and there's some things that we get through when we land at this place of doing what brings us joy, right. And hearing them talk about it yesterday, and you know, and hearing you say it in a different way, but it's still having the same underlying message of just moving to this place of like not letting anyone steal your joy, doing things right. in spite of, giving yourself expression mm -hmm. instead of Freedom. trying to prove yourself. You're tr you're expressing yourself. Has been like a phrase that since last Friday has been coming up a lot. And I'm seeing it in yeah. you know, what you're saying right now. It's such good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm really grateful. And I, I, I mentioned it to you today in a little, a little DM. Mm -hmm. I shared an image with you that I um, have since archived from my main Godard Pilates page. Um, someday I'll bring it back. Okay. But um, I, I was reading this book last night before going to sleep. And I, and I learned about mandalas. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce the, the, the word. And I was learning about what they are. And I realized that this artwork that I created with my, my daughter, who's now 13, um, at the beginning of this year, it's a mandala. And a mandala, I learned, is basically a symbol and a manifestation of creation. Mm -hmm. And then I go back to nine months ago when we were talking. And we were talking about, okay, I... I've written six books. I feel transformed, especially by the manual I wrote, Pilates for Children. It was unprecedented territory. It was daunting. It was intimidating, but I did it, and I feel really good about it. But what do I do now? Mm -hmm. And so I just... And, and then I realized I don't have to do anything. Let me just be and let me yes. just enjoy the yes. moment. I don't have to keep searching and looking. It I will find that. me, right? Yes, yes. So, so then I, um, 
I'll cut to just the end of the story. I ended up making this beautiful image with my daughter. And the center of the image is the profile pic for open access, me curled in a little ball. And it symbolized a lot for me. It was a difficult start of the year, right? I, mm. I believe in good faith that I was being given baseless threats, harassment, intimidation. And I didn't have the freedom to, to fight back and, and I couldn't I have a family. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. So I created this image with my daughter in a way I didn't believe even what I was writing around that, that curled ball position. I wrote become the change in, in, a, in a circle. And then we took the image that we see a uh, double leg stretch in wrote, return to life with the arms glued to the sides. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and, you know, my, my daughter created this beautiful watercolor of butterfly wings. And you can see that image in my profile pic for Ghadar Pilates. But she, we, we designed it in a way that it was circular. And the butterflies, there are four of them that go around this, the curled position, the cocoon, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it looked, and then around that, it said love all around, which is, uh, you know, a, a nod to my teacher Romana, that that's her kind of her tag phrase, love all yes. around. So when you look at it, um, it looks like a kaleidoscope. The colors are really beautiful. My daughter picked the colors. And, and so I'm reading about this, this mandala yesterday and, and I realized, and it said, sometimes when you create your mandala, you don't realize why your soul chose those words, why your soul chose those images, why it chose those colors. Mm. And now, literally, last night, I realized, and it literally gives me chills just now saying it, that that image, which I did take down of my own will to avoid entanglements, but I had every right, I believe, to, to, sh to show, I realized that looking at that image, which I had as wallpaper on my cell phone for months, yeah. and looking at it elsewhere in my home now, I have looked at that image every single day since, and I didn't realize that that image helped me create open access Pilates archives. Because yeah. Open Access Pilates Archives is the transformation that came from a very difficult situation. And let's just say this. I've never let go of anything. And anything I've ever let go of at this point has my claw marks on it. I tried not to let go of it. Um, and in a way, I didn't. Because if I hadn't gone through that, we wouldn't have open access Pilates archives. We wouldn't have bigger questions being asked about the method. Yeah. And we wouldn't have the opportunity to discover more. I'm not creating this account because I know all of the answers. I'm like everybody else who has a passion for the work. I want to know more. Yeah. And I want to meet, and I've already met so many people with good character and with integrity who have original equipments and and I'm a vintage lover and and I oh and I and I have been for a very long time and that includes the Pilates equipment and I want to know well why why did Corolla's uh reformer have that center pole and no guide wheels but the carriage was elevated and you know i i've shared uh ken endelman has william herman's uh divana apparatus and, and you know um I've, I've met so many people amazing people and that's the thing i i have chosen that my account will yeah. feature the work because mm -hmm. i thought to myself well if i'm going to if i believe i'm getting threatened for sharing archival images, yes. what can I do? Right. Well, what I've always had on my side is I can do the work. And mm. I am extremely detail-oriented. Yes. And I have my experience with Romana. Right. So I decided, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Of course, the first post in this account is very telling. Um, and I just took it from there. And this has been the best continuing education of my life. Wow. And I realized that my mentor is not someone else. It's myself. For, for those who are 
in the chat and are like, what happened? What happened? What happened? Can you give like a high level kind of backstory a little bit to what happened? Because I'm hearing. It's going to be hard, of, but I think, I think yeah. I can share this. Because... Just, just to kind of paint a picture. I mean, not everyone yeah. is in the Pilates world too who watches or maybe watches yeah. later. So just to kind of give a high level explanation. Okay. Of... Let me start by, by giving you a quote that my daughter told me this morning that I thought could not be more perfect for what's going on these days. Mark Twain. History doesn't repeat itself. It rhymes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so let's think about more recent Pilates history. Let's newer teachers educate yourselves about what happened in the late nineties and two thousands. And you can do that. You can go to Pilates anytime and you can watch interviews by Gordon Troy and Ken Enzelman and Joan Braybart, and you can learn about what happened. Okay. okay. So now we are getting into some rhyming mm. and I have always, always love because I consider myself an artist. Um, I've always loved this three page pamphlet called around the clock and back in one minute that Joseph Pilates created in 1943. Okay. And so, and I'm also a vintage lover and there's this, you know, I, I, am wearing a, a 1950s dress for you today, Martin. And I, wow. and I collect, you know, I collect vintage. And so this, in this image, this beautiful image, she's wearing this, this vintage bathing suit, which was, you know, current at the time. And I thought, well, you know, I've got connections in the vintage uh, clothing world. I'm going to put my feelers out to try to find this bathing suit. And I did. And I found mm -hmm. it in my favorite color of light blue. And I thought, you know, this is just going to be my fun passion project. I'm just going to um, try to recreate this around the clock image. Yes. And so, and it was really, it was a lot of work, you know, it's really just two images. Romana taught me the exercise. You basically do the double leg stretch. And every time you pull the knees in, you swivel to the next hour of the clock. Yes. But yet when you look at the description in the pamphlet, it's slightly different than that. You extend your legs to every other hour of the clock and you give your body a little massage in the ball position in the, in the transition between those those two hours okay. so that was again another example of you looking at something but you don't really see it and so when that was finally brought to my attention and I realized oh and then you know Tone and Michael from uh, they used to be at 2121 Broadway um, they did a nice Pilates anytime video talking about you can find it on Pilates anytime talking about this exercise and the pamphlets and showing how to do it and like yeah. Wow, where, where was I? Why is it taking me so many years to realize this was a different way of doing it? Yeah. And, and a wonderful way because you massage your back and, and you really learn about your, your imbalances, right? You're going clockwise and then counterclockwise and it never, don't care who you are, it never feels the same in both directions. <laughs> yeah. So you learn about yourself. It's a great exercise. Um, and it's just a really wonderful um, ad. It's got the Art Deco feel, and it's just, it's beautiful in every way. Yeah. So in all of my research, you know, we know that Joseph Pilates, he, he documented his work a lot, and he generally did not protect it. So I believe that uh, around the clock, was written with a copyright of 1943, but it was never officially registered within those first mm. five years. And it was never renewed in the 60s. So and he, and, hello, yeah. And so it was, <laughs> and it was, and it was distributed. I mean, Deborah Lesson has a pamphlet that she received from her teacher, Carola Trier, who was Joe's student. And I know, I know multiple people who have the original pamphlet. So, so at the beginning of the year, I had mentioned to some of my friends, you know, I'm really excited. I'm going to do some things with this image. I'm going to do some original art with it and maybe recreate it. And, and someone said to me, you know, so-and-so believes that this is theirs. And I said, but I don't understand. It just doesn't add up. And I reached out to the person who works with that gentleman. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, it's always good just to go straight to, to this person and, and, and ask. And I did. And I was told I couldn't use it. And I was really, and then I was told, and, and, and as we got further into it, I was told that the, the other images, the more creative images I made with it, that I would have to enter into a license agreement for it. Mm, yeah. And 
I don't want to infringe on any copyright, but I do believe in good faith that this, this image is public domain. And yet, a few weeks into it, an application was filed for a trademark of the image. It hasn't gone through yet. You can go to Victoria's stories at the Pilates snob account, and you might still see that up there. Um, and so it was really hard for me because let's just say this. My grandmother, who was a writer, who, a lover of words, she spoke many languages. She was Brazilian, and she spoke English fluently, which was very unusual for her generation. She taught me that there is a very important word in no matter what language it is, and that word, the most important word there is in the world, is justice. And I felt that this was very unjust. And I tried to get myself to think, okay, well, you know what? Maybe peace is a better word. Okay. I don't want to surround myself with toxic energy. And I want to be able to enjoy. I have a lot in my life. I want to enjoy my life and enjoy my mm. teaching. And I don't want it to, that toxic energy to infiltrate my love and steal my joy of the work. Right. Um, and it was, but it was hard because if you don't have justice, how can you have peace? And that was what I was battling with. And you can see yes. this a lot in the world. This is just a little microcosm of what's going on in the world. Absolutely. And that's what I felt that my, now I realize it's a mandala, but that's what I realized that become the change love all around. At the time I made it, to be honest, it was tongue in cheek. I didn't believe there was love all around. I felt abandoned. I felt disillusioned. I felt frustrated. Of course. But yet through this experience, I have met so many people in the broader Pilates community yes. that have really opened up my eyes and opened up my world. And yes. it has been spectacular. Beautiful. Absolutely. You know, I, I, was, I was fed a narrative because I was certified in 2000 by Romana. And I wouldn't take it back for the world. And she is my mentor and always will be. And I hear her words in my, my head every day. Yeah. But, you know, we were fed a narrative that unless we were trained by her, it wasn't Pilates. That's the root. Okay? Yeah. And then come a year into my teaching, as a new teacher, before the internet was really a big thing, in walks a student who trained with Joe's student, Kathy Grants. They said, wait a minute, are you telling me that there are other people who train with Joe who also teach? Right. I was shocked. And, I, and from that moment on, I wanted to learn more. Oh, and now, and I've talked about my student, Clara, many times. Um, and, and, and then she, she also lives part-time in Paris, and she worked with a man named Jerome Andrews, mm -hmm. who was Joe's student and close friend. And, she, and Clara said he wanted, Joe wanted him to take over. I mean, we hear this about a lot of people. People uh, say right. that about Eve Gentry, and, you know, yes, we hear that about sure. a lot. Yeah? Yes, yes. So I was fascinated, and, and so he, uh, Joe gave... Jerome Andrews blueprints to the reformer and the chair and he built them there in Paris and my student inherited them and got the weighted shoes, which I've also recreated here in my studio with vintage metal plates and yeah. in my husband's old canvas uh, ballet slippers because they were too big to fit into mine. Um, and so I just see how all of these little things brought me to where I am today. But of yeah, course. 21 years into teaching and now this is, it's like, aha. I, that, <sighs> that resonates with me in so many ways coming from these conversations that I have with people every day. You, you start to think that there is one way, one person, one gatekeeper, one authority. Yeah. And you think, well, maybe there's one or two, or maybe there's a few more. And then I meet someone from Turkey. And then I meet someone from Ireland. And then mm -hmm. I meet someone from Australia. And I meet someone in Germany. And they're like, I was taught by this person. I was taught by this person. And I was taught by this person. And you realize that these people, and we don't have to name names, but mm -hmm. they're on the same level as these people. So yeah. they are equally as qualified to teach as Absolutely. this person over here who has a book Maybe a, and a, a bigger media presence and too. a bigger media presence mm -hmm. and exactly. So, you know, we talk about um, 
there's a phrase like being ghetto fabulous in a certain arena, everyone knows you. Mm-hmm. And then there's other people that they may not have as much of as many as many eyeballs on them, but they're absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And they have their own life experience because of the people that they've taught and they've been, you know, and so those things land us at a place where we have so many potential teachers and so many people to learn from and so many other ways to have access to this knowledge. And um, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, Michael, I think he's still watching. Yes, yeah. Um, he had mentioned to me earlier, he said, you know, you can own a Picasso painting, but it doesn't mean you have the rights to Picasso's work. Mm. Right. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so. Some, some great <laughs> comments here. Um, and so Alicia's uh, here. So maybe the entire plot of the world should work together to hashtag free the archives. Maybe. Maybe. Does I've he had, sound like a bad idea? I know. I've had, quote, unquote, that guy slash, quote, unquote, some guy on here as uh, Michael. Ken Endelman refers to him as some guy and that guy. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here's uh, two comments here. One from Late Moose Pilates. Uh, I bought the original Around the Clock pamphlet over 15 years ago at the PMA. Proud to own and display. So if I post it, I'll get sued? Really? This is the well, that's the thing. As an educator, right? That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Some people will get harassed and others will not. Yep. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I will tell you that I take artwork off of my walls for every single video shoot I do for Open Access Pilates Archives. Really? I have, and eventually I'm probably going to have about 40 pieces of original artwork in my studio. Um, but there are just a couple that I take mm. down because I don't want to deal with that toxic energy. And I'm not admitting any guilt because I believe in good faith. I have every right to display it. I have a home-based studio. It's in my home. Yeah. And even if it weren't, even if it were a commercial space, I do believe that I have a right to display it based on yeah. what I said earlier. But I, I don't want to deal with that. No. I have two beautiful children. I have seven pets that keep me really busy. I have a wonderful husband, mom, sister, <laughs> three nephews. I love what I do. I want to enjoy my life. Yeah. And I, I choose not to get entangled. I felt in the beginning of the year like I was stuck in a spider web. I can imagine that sense of being stuck because you, you authentically want to help and to share and share yes. your joy. And then someone has you under thumb and, and not necessarily the fight with that person as much as the fact that it's, it's hindering you from being able to freely share over here, knowing that there's going to be someone in your ear on yes. this side. There's going to be grief coming from somewhere else. And that's right. a really frustrating place to live. Yeah. And I think the, the problem is this is a hard issue for people to understand because if you post something and someone says to you, that belongs to me, you need to take it down, you assume that they're telling you the truth. And right. of course, you're going to just take it down. Take it down, right. But then... If you step back a moment and you actually look at, well, why? And if you do like what I did and you ask, Mm -hmm. can you provide me proof? Mm -hmm. Can you show me? That's all I need. I don't want to be involved in copyright infringement. I would just like to be given proof. And when that's not given and when the, the attention is diverted to like a photo of me at Romana's granddaughter's studio in Fort Lauderdale where I'm taking a picture with one of my teachers and on the wall in the background of her studio there are some pictures of Joe and then that gets used as threat threats towards me well you did that you posted that photo I mean they're blurry photos in the background of me with my teacher so this is what I was dealing with and that's why it felt so unjust That's why I took a step back and I removed myself from social media. I needed to get away from the noise. I needed to figure out what my next step would be because at that point, my joy was taken away from me and I was aggravated and frustrated and 
I know that a lot of people don't want to deal with toxic energy and their, their first inclination is, well, just ignore it, just block and yes. move on with your life. Right. But then, then it's going to happen to the next person. And what about the person after that? And when is it going to be enough? Yes. Right. Like I said, history, I used to say, History repeats itself, but after what my daughter brought up this morning with Mark Twain's quote, history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes. And I think that is exactly what we're seeing here. Mm, right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's kind it's of just, heavy. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. We've, yeah, we, we go where we need to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Real Plotty says, if you're accused by IG and the post is removed, you don't just click OK, request a review. Yes. And yeah. And I didn't yeah. know that. I mm -hmm. didn't know that. So by the time I learned that I, it was too late. There was, there was a certain window where I could have done that. Um, yeah. I mean, I could go on. There's, there's more, but, but yeah. maybe we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Explore Pilates. Thanks for joining me day, third day in a row. <laughs> at a new phase. <laughs> That's been fun. Um, that was a great chat too. Um, just talking with her there's something yeah, to be I said that. yeah I, I, there's something to be said for um i just want to think about moving from a place of joy having the confidence to do things that bring you joy so that's why it's just really i feel like i'm still hanging on this because when people try and steal your joy I and mean, it sounds like bullying it sounds like there's a targeting that's happening there i know you you're very it, intentional you're intentional to not say it but i'm gonna say it that sounds like bullying um, and there's an example, um, well, it's not an example of bullying, but where you can see where certain people are getting targeted and others aren't. And that's happened to me yes. on the other side, actually, where, where there, was, there was something that's happening and they're like, did this happen to you? And I was like, no, actually, I was fine. And then someone else was like, well, that happened to me. Why did that not happen to you? Right. So, and then we get into mm -hmm. favoritism or the targeting or the bullying and all these things get ugly. And people, this is the ugly side of Pilates, right? Yeah. Like we, we talk about the warm and fuzzy and helping people and all these different things mm -hmm. and growing our business. The, all that stuff is wonderful, but this also happens. This exists. And if we keep this turning exists. the other cheek, it's just going to continue to grow. Because in my opinion, it's not just one person. I think someone else is being groomed to take over. So that's all I'm going to say about that as well. Mm, yes. Um, there's a... Two comments here, Michael Brown. I got, I got to write something down too, before I get to this. So uh, Michael Brown's comment. I'm convinced that Victoria's takedown request was so quick with my challenging ownership in the comments. Um, so challenging ownership. And then going more Joe Sonny's comment. So do you double dog merit dare me to use my original logo again? Okay, so for Sonny, Sonny was one of the people that I reached out to because mm -hmm. she had an image um, that she worked with a graphic designer that was also a, a derivative of the around the clock image for going more okay. Joe. And we had a zoom uh, conference call the minute that this one teacher, I was teaching her on zoom. And at the end of the, the lesson, I brought this up, you know, we were talking about what's my next thing. And I brought up my project and she said, well, be careful. And, you know, you may want to reach out to, to other people. And Sunny was one of the, the names brought up. And that very night, we had a Zoom conference. And, uh, yeah, so that, that happens to her. Um, and the frustrating thing is that, okay, I'm just going to go with this, this movie that I saw. Okay. I, I saw this movie, and I, I'm sorry I don't remember the name of it. And it was difficult subject matter about... Um, it was very cleverly done, and it was about uh, a woman whose best friend had been raped in college, and she eventually committed suicide. And in this, in this movie, this, the main character, she's seeking revenge for her best friend. And so she, and she's going back. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a really intense movie, but very well done. And there was a moment in the movie where the main character went to visit the home of the lawyer who was, was representing the man who raped her best friend. 
Okay. And, and, and this lawyer sat there on the couch and he was explaining how we basically have people in our, in our law offices who will scan women's accounts and they'll say, well, look at this risque photo and look at this and look at this. Mm. And they try to paint a picture. Right? right. And I thought, oh my God, I know I wasn't <laughs> in this exact situation, but I feel like I was stripped emotionally. Yeah. And so I had somebody going through my account and grasping at straws. I mean, if you have to go to a picture of me in Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. and with a blurry picture in the background and say, we're going to use this against you if you, if you, if you don't take this down. Yes. Or if I have a, a photo that I used, um, an archival photo of Joe that he published, that he published. Yes for the junior reformer and it's with a kid. And I think, oh, that's the perfect photo I'll use to promote my benefit class for pediatric cancer research. And that gets removed Yikes. from Instagram. Right. And, and, and I'm gonna hold it together, but that is a student and a friend of mine who died at nine years, old, years of age, who I knew since he was in my, my friend's womb. Yes. It's despicable. Absolutely despicable. And it was unjust because he published the photo. Joe published it in his advertisement and you can go to the New York Public Library and you can see it. You can see it. I can find the collection of uh, France. It's a, it's, I'll find it for it. I can find the information for whoever it wants. But it was published by Joe in an advertisement. And I wasn't making any money and I haven't made any money from any of those images. And I, and I really didn't want to, I had thought maybe I could use my recreation and put it on t-shirts or something like mm -hmm. that. And when I actually looked at it, I am not that type of, it's just too hard to, to produce merchandise for me. I've yeah. got too much going on. I want to teach. I want to learn. I want to create art, but I, I don't have that desire to, to create merchandise. I have my books, which is giving information and, and, and that's my artwork that I sell. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I, I really, that wasn't ever the thing. It was just about sharing what I created with my daughter with the rest wow. of the Pilates community. Yes. So I think that, I think I've divulged way more than I expected to in this conversation. <laughs> and I, and I said the word, I believe, multiple times. So I believe that I am safe. Mm -hmm. And I didn't use any, anything derogatory. I just am speaking my mind. And I live in the United States. And last I heard, we are supposed to have freedom of speech. Mm. I don't really believe we do. And I feel like the legal system lets us down a lot. But I'm hoping that's going to change. Should we talk about open access Pilates archives? <laughs> yes. okay. um, the word that I wrote down before you get to that, or as we get into our transition, is the word movement. And uh, I was reading a book that I got from one of my colleagues here for Christmas called Tribe. And he talked about movements. Mm -hmm. And the way that it describes the fact that when you have a movement, there's passion, there's persistence that just came up. And that is run by a collective, a community. So it's not one person holding all the cards, being right. the authority and lording it over. So a movement comes when people start to, it gathers momentum, it, and then everyone collectively shares and there's this, this collective interest, there's a collaboration and all these beautiful things happen. That's happened now a year into core conversations where I'm asking people to come on and people like yourself nine months ago show up. We meet, we have, we hear great stories of the children you work with, your books and what you're doing. And then from there, the people that are in the chat who follow you now follow me. And then they show up mm -hmm. tomorrow and then they say, hey, that was a great conversation with Christina. And I say, I would love to have you on too. And they say yes, and they come on. That's a movement. So we've created yes. a movement. No one owns this i don't own core conversations we collectively have grown this i love that and mm -hmm. i believe that that's the way that the whole pilates community is moving where now these conversations are unearthing the fact that there are so many people out there in this whole wide world who are authorities on movements 
who are yes. passionate about people, who are making a change in people's lives, who are heroes all over the earth. So mm -hmm. it's not one person who was raised in New York City who has all of the cards. Everyone right. has the cards now because it's a movement. It's collective. So that, from my perspective, is what open access plays is, where it's now, okay, it's you taking pictures and you going from archives. I'm sure that that's going to start a snowball of other people saying, hey, I'm in Turkey and I've worked with Joe Supplies and no one's ever asked me, but here are some of my pictures. Mm -hmm. Like that can come out as we start yeah. this movement as well. Yeah. And, and open access Pilates is not, I don't owe that to anybody who claims to own photos. I, I've done this. I've studied my notes with Romana. I have been certified by her and trained with her. She taught a lot of archival work and Joe documented it. So that backs it up. I don't owe this to anybody as That's it was implied to me earlier this week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, is I imagine that if you were to have gone into Joe's studio, maybe Joe as a teacher wouldn't have been the right fit for you. Maybe it was Clara Pilates. Maybe mm -hmm. it was H Hannah, you know, right. may, maybe it was someone else. So even, you know, Joe created this work, but there were other people who, who worked alongside him who also influenced what he did. Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say is even Joe isn't the single most owner of the work, right? Because he was, and I, I did a whole thing. Um, I think it was uh, in this December, 2020, around that time on my Godar, my main Pilates page, Godar Pilates, where I compared a lot of Martha Graham's technique to a lot of the, the, the physical culture and movement standing exercises and floor exercises that Joe did. And it's, the similarities are uncanny. I mean, they were two geniuses, but who's to say they didn't influence each other? Yeah, maybe they didn't like each other, but they definitely influenced each other. Absolutely. I mean, I, I show side by side the... The, the movements in, that Joe did and the movements that, mm -hmm. that Martha taught. And, and you can't, de there's no denying. Right. There's no denying it. So, so even when Joe was doing it, it was based out of a collective movement in a way too. Well said. Yeah. So what is your vision for open access Pilates now? Like where do we go from here with it? Well, I'm not sure, and I'm not going to pressure myself to figure out an yeah. end goal, uh, no, because right. I think my last conversation with you helped me realize that I don't have to have a plan. Absolutely. It will come to me. Yes. But what I do see happening is as I get in touch with people like Jillian Hessel and Ken Endelman and Troy McCarty and countless other people who have original equipment, I do see myself wanting to eventually be able to travel and to go to, to these people and, and to, to see the equipment and maybe do some, some interviews in person, like be with this person and learn from this person and feel this equipment, whether or not I'm allowed to use it, but just even just to see it in person it's would be touch such it, right? it's a touch. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that, that would be wonderful. So, you know, it's not easy for me to travel with, with, you know, having a lot of commitments with my family, but um, I do see that happening in the future. That's something mm -hmm. that I would really love. And, um, you know, I will do this for as long as I can. There's lots of material. It's keeping me in good shape and it's keeping my mind okay. sharp. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm just going to keep going as long as I can with this. And I think that, you know, I really, I don't care if I have a huge following or not. I just mm -hmm. want people who do follow to, to realize why this is an important account yes. and, and why, you know, this is, this is, this is for everybody, and yes. this is the only way that I'm able to share it without getting um, entangled in things yes. that I believe are unjust. Absolutely. So just let's talk like the, the nuts and bolts of social media and business for a second. Mm -hmm. If I was to hypothetically look at some of one of your posts and let's say a standing arm springs exercise, and I was to uh, to do it and po post a video of it. Are there certain things that you'd like me to like? I because I would do it with the intent of saying this is where I got it from. Follow her; she's doing great work. Is there anything? I think like that's great. I think okay. 
I think it's really respectful to if you see if you see it on open access uh, and you want and you by all means have every right because it's not my work it's Joe's work um, you have every right to share the the video but it, it's always wonderful to to have a little bit of like a, you know, and by the way this is where I where I saw it that's great I okay. think that's really nice perfect so here's yeah. a, here's a way to do it just to standardize it for a moment put your handle so that the, at open access plotties archives, archives. Mm -hmm. um do uh and any hashtags that you want to see kind of recycling through it because i saw you have like quite a few of them there is there any fun yeah i i've with? been using share the work share um, the work i know that this week the free the archives has come about so okay could be good okay. um but I'm yeah and, and joseph pilates is a good one um Pilates archives, archival Pilates, original Pilates, all of that is good. But, you know, sharing the work, open access Pilates archives is also my handle, but it's also a hashtag that I use as well. I'm writing these down. Okay. Open archive, open access. Oh, open access Pilates archives, share the work, free the archives, Pilates, uh, Pilates archives and archival Pilates and original Pilates. I feel like I'm writing on a chalkboard right now, Christina. Like I'm just like <laughs> A R C H I V E S. There you go. O A S. Bam. Yes. The um. Yeah, so that's uh, Sherry said, Ramona taught us to credit the work, respect our industry is vital. Absolutely. And that's why I'm talking about this uh, to Alicia, like uh, the sense of archiving it, credit, like give people credit while it, where it's due in the sense yeah. of if you put it out, repost it. I do it with people all the time just for fun and I'll always try and credit them. Um, but then it just gets some momentum, gets people excited about it. So yeah. if they see me do it, much like, okay, a little side story from yesterday. The guy, the gentleman that was on Trey Arts, and and I was saying I, I'm gonna make a little soundbite from it. He was talking about these his art shows, and we've had my wife used to be a general manager for a big box gym, and they'd have these art people come in for art night, and you get your wine, and then you paint like a Monet painting or whatever it is, and and it's fine. This guy is painting like. Uh, rap artist and you know Michael Jordan and all these things. Uh -huh. and he would he would paint it, and then everyone that's an amazing painting. How'd you do that? And he said, Well, let's do a paint night. And then he would have people come to his studio. He took a big dive and and got a studio, and then he would do like a walkthrough of making his paintings. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing like a Kawhi Leonard painting or um, a Bouja Benton, who's a reggae artist, and all these different things. And but he's a black gentleman. He's in good shape. He likes his music and all these different things. And I went, one, because the painting is good, and two, because he looked like me. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, you know, some, uh, you know, a white older lady yeah. painting. So I saw myself in the movement of art, and that's a, another thing that to appeal, you know, appealed to me. So the more that people see your work and then say, hey, open access is doing it. Here's my, here's my rendition mm -hmm. and see of- other, And see other bodies doing it. And right. seeing, that's the longest way of saying it. Let's see other bodies doing it and then yes. give her the credit for it. Yeah, that's, that's the awesome. movement. That's a great movement. I think we came up with a good idea. You did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Yeah. Um, there's a couple more comments here. Before we're done, can, wow, 55. Crazy. How are we done already? I can't see the comments, so if you read them, I, I, sure. I, I don't so know why love, mine are frozen. Love Movement Ply says, before we're done, can we see your beautiful dress? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Can Is that enough? <laughs> I'm, I'm attached. It's like a... Like oh, a yes. <laughs> she's, she's anchored right now, so no. Maybe after. <laughs> Um, thank you. Plies, hi, IG, Tammy, hello. Crest, uh, Crest Central Pilates. How's it going, everybody? Um, so Love Moon Pilates was saying, I support you. Thank you for this conversation. Uh, Joel Crosby saying, I love your work. Thank you. Uh, a comment that he made earlier, too, when you're talking about the Martha, Martha Graham mm -hmm. piece was, good movement uh, for, of the human body will always look similar at the core level. Yeah, you know, when, when we talked nine months ago, 
you asked me a question about is Pilates a performance? And I was really hesitant to, I, I, I didn't want to agree with that in the beginning because there's this rehabilitative aspect of Pilates. And I want Pilates to be accessible to everybody. And, and I don't, even though I was a dancer, I don't want people to feel that they have to be a dancer to do good Pilates. So I didn't want to say that, that it can be a performance. But then you kind of got me to where I admitted it because you know, it's for my body, it can feel that way because mm -hmm. Romana would always say, you know, Pilates is poetry in motion. And, and, and it was what, what was so wonderful about working with Romana when I transitioned out of ballet to, to Pilates was that it gave me the same feeling I had when yes, I was I've dancing. And, yes. and I, you know how they have that saying, an athlete dies two deaths? Well, it's the same with the dancer. We're athletes yeah. too. We're artistic mm -hmm. athletes. And so you mourn the loss of something you've done. Like for me, from the age of seven, and then it's like, well, how am I, like, I can't sit at a desk for the rest of my life. I spent my life moving and, and studying the way I move and trying to perfect it and, you know, and being creative. And how can I find that joy for my life, even though mm -hmm. my body won't obey my will anymore? And right. so Pilates was, was that key for me to, to still have joy if, of movement in my life yes. while still honoring my body. So yes. yeah, you're going to see some exercises on open access that are really crazy and definitely not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps Joe or Ramana decided not to teach them anymore, but I'm sharing what I, what I believe was documented. And yes. you just, you know, it, again, it creates bigger questions. It's not supposed to fill you up with the answers. It's to yes. open you up with the questions, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that movements can be done in a way where it does look like poetry in motion. Mm -hmm. And, I'm about to work with a new student who's an amputee and I am very excited to work with her yes. because she is going to push me and mm -hmm. I, I think that this is going to make a difference in her life. Yes. So um, I think Pilates can be many things to many different people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And, and Michael's comment, Pilates is a workout, not a performance. It should be poetic. Uh, it is not a performance. And then Explore Pilates said yes and no. And there's, and the, like, that conversation yeah, can go in so many person. different ways. Exactly. And I would also say, because I'm always in the in the practice of challenging and redeeming words that we want to cancel from mm -hmm. our from our you know vocabulary. And, like, right. define performance. Like, what does performance even look like? Right. So that's why when you said, I think that was the word you used nine months ago. And that's why I was like, oh, I don't want to say it's a performance. <laughs> but I do remember uh, working with, one of my grandmaster teachers, Juanita Lopez, as an apprentice or a newly certified teacher. And we were, I think I was just newly certified and I was taking a private lesson from her, but I've had a bunch of apprentices watching and she looked at me, she said, just remember Pilates, this is your performance. And I thought, well, this feels like a performance because I have an audience here and they're looking at me to try to show them a how it can look and they're you know they're hungry to see you know to, to see pilates done and and, and see lots yeah. of different variations of the exercises so that was the first time it was brought up to me where it could be a performance yes but you know i teach out of my my modest home-based Pilates studio. I don't have an audience. I do mm -hmm. Pilates because it makes me feel good. And yes. when I don't do it, I'm cranky and I, my body hurts. So <laughs> where, yes, it could be a performance. I don't do it because of that. I do it because it feeds my soul. Yes. yes. And, and it was, it, it's interesting, you know, Joseph Pilates, you know, I started doing all this dry brushing. I featured, you know, all of the stuff he did for the skin in mm -hmm. some earlier posts on open access. And so I've been doing this dry brushing and I have very, yes, okay. very sensitive skin. I, I took malaria pills in 2004 when I went to the Amazon for my grandmother's 90th birthday. She was actually born in Manaus in, in the state of Amazon. We went there for her 90th and I was taking malaria pills. And when I got back, I developed the worst case of psoriasis imaginable. Um, second only to the psoriasis that I developed after the birth of each of my children. And it was like all over my legs and my arms. And so I had to use like, at that point, I used steroids, uh, creams to, to take care of it. 
And then after the birth of my son, I developed it literally from head to toe. And I had to go to a, a dermatologist and stand in a light box three times a week for five minutes for five months because I was nursing and I didn't want to take any, any steroids. Of course, great. And then I knew it was going to happen after my daughter was born and I paid out of pocket for her birth. So I didn't have insurance to cover that treatment. So I went to very a holistic route, which I won't describe here because people will find it gross, but it was free and natural <laughs> and it took care of it just as well. And, and, uh, but I'm like, I'm very sensitive. I, I, I had a, a friend from Brazil, uh, right before my 40th birthday, give me some body, uh, bath, lotion that she brought from Brazil and I used it and then later that day we went to the opera house to watch the Sarasota Youth Opera and I started to feel like my hips were hurting a lot earlier that morning and I went to hang upside down like they were so painful and then I was sitting in the theater and I started to feel like I was coming down with a fever so we came home and I was full of chills so I got in the hot shower and I put the bath wash on me some more and I woke up in the middle of the night and it looked like it looks, although I already have had chicken pox, it looked like I had chicken pox all over my legs and it was inside of my throat and I couldn't eat anything for a week. I could only drink water. Yeah. So, so it was really, and it was a type of psoriasis, a pus yeah. pustular psoriasis. But, um, you know, that is what I'm trying to get at is that <laughs> why didn't I try this dry brushing earlier? Because right. when Joe talks about clogging your pores and you're putting lotion on and it feels like, you know, you're clogging yes. your pores. Right. I don't really need to put lotion on to treat this, this psoriasis. It's an autoimmune disorder. And I don't need to use that anymore because I can do this dry brushing. Like, why didn't I start this earlier? So if it hadn't been for open access and researching all of this, I wouldn't have started this program for myself, yeah. which is really making a huge difference in my comfort and in my confidence, because Amazing. you get very self conf uh, very self conscious when you when you have some, you know, it's your skin, it's your biggest Isn't organ. It? I mean, right. It's hard. I remember going to um, one of our conventions in Fort Lauderdale and, and my, my, my teacher, uh, Rocky was giving me a lesson and I felt like like um, just very self-conscious about the, my my issues of my skin, and she actually mm -hmm. went and she has also she was also a massage therapist, and she touched my arm, and she said, "So what's going on here?" And I felt like, "Oh my God, she actually touched me! Like this isn't putting her off." You know, I make yes. it sound really awful, but but it really it really was something that I was self-conscious about. Mm -hmm. So. That's one of the things that I miss about teaching on Zoom versus in the studio is being able to touch our clients. Yes, because I'll is. tell you that that wasn't even an exercise. That was me standing by my reformer talking to my teacher who taught me in my, my 12 day intensive getting started. She's always been a very special teacher to me. And the fact that she took the time and, and, and felt comfortable touching my skin where I yes. felt I looked ugly mm. really meant a lot to me. And, I, I remember that more than probably corrections from, I mean, I write down all my corrections Powerful. after lessons, but that yeah. was the most no. poignant nice. moment for me in that lesson. Um, we got to go, but I don't know if everyone's caught that she said that she writes down her corrections after a lesson. Talk every about time. a commitment to getting better every time. That's amazing. Amazing. Um, I, I, I've always done good. that. I've done that when I, when I was a ballet student, when I was getting coached privately. I had some amazing, amazing teachers yes. and coaches. And that was, you know, we weren't using video cameras as much back then, mm -hmm. the way people do it now, so that you could study what you did. But I wanted to remember, and I tell my yes. students, you know, even when I'm taking a class, even if it's on Zoom and someone says something that really resonated with me, I'm not going to interrupt the flow of the lesson and go write it down, but I try to remind myself, you know, maybe 10 minutes later, or, you know, 20 yeah. minutes later, okay, just remember, that's something you want to write down afterwards because that yes. really was good. And, yes. and, and then immediately I've after the notebook. lesson is over, <laughs> I write it down because yes. how else could I do open access Pilates archives if I didn't have what Romana wrote yes. or told me? Wow. I write it down. And that's why what I why I'm saying I chose to do this because I have the ability to 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 do a lot of these things not everything but I can yes. do a lot of the things 
reasonably well, but I will tell you that every video is usually shot at least five times because I will look at it and I'll say, that doesn't look right. I don't like yeah. that. Um, and so it, it's really hard it to, you know, two, two videos could have taken an hour. Of course. It's very time consuming. I don't get paid for it. Um, but I'm learning from it. And I'm meeting wonderful you're people. you're starting a, a movement. movement. I guess so. Let's do it. Yeah, let's people, do it. People, let's get some videos out. Re, just give her the credit on it. And let's get those out. And let's continue to just push this forward. And let's start that movement. Christina, thank you so much today. I wish thank you I could so spend much, another Martin. hour with you. So many, so many rich, rich things that came out of this, this chat. Today. I really appreciate, I really appreciate it. it. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my, my story. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for being so candid with it, too. That's, it just helps us all to get better. All Hopefully right, everybody, okay. thank you so much. Thank you for all the chats. Yes, she is so wonderful and generous, no doubt. All right, Christina, I will send you the replay of this. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll thank see you. you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.